Hello everyone, Triple is back here with some more Professor Lee and Pandora's box. Been a while since we recorded some. Let's just get straight back into it. I think we've got like a journal entry or something. I've not really been checking like the journal. It's like um, Mr. Anderson's memories. Find this book to Mr. Anderson at the site of the livestock competition. It seems his mother in law had searched for the Elysian box before her passing. Though Mr. Anderson doesn't know why she was so intent on finding the box. It's clear to me now that. The Elysian box and dropstone are inextricably linked to each other, though I don't yet fully understand why. And, okay, so we have we are actually properly caught up on the all the journal entries, and then uh, nothing in mysteries and the Cameron hamster. Do that some other time. Oh, don't mean to do that. I meant to just close it. There we go. Anyway, uh, we now walk to the left. I've got to follow my... And we talk to Jacques right here. Oh dear, oh dear. The train's scheduled to depart any minute now and she's still not here. Everyone's efforts will have been invaded. She misses a train out of town. Oh my, oh my. Maybe women just need more time to get ready for things like this. Oh, why must she make me worry? Excuse me, but are you waiting for someone? It's none of your business. You haven't even told the master about what we're doing. Look, perhaps it's best to leave him be. Sometimes it's best not to barge into the affairs of others. Well, if he doesn't want us to talk to him, maybe you shouldn't be thinking out loud. Yeah, screw that guy. They can go away. Um, we continue at left. Then we enter the door on the left. And then we talk to Dorothea. Oh dear, I forgot to get apples for tonight's meal. Say, that reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Would you care to hear it, sir? Okay. Uh, this puzzle is worth 20 out of 20 pick rats. It's puzzle 31. Pass the apples. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. Johnny and Thomas are each carrying some apples. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. Conversely, if Tommy gave Johnny two apples, Johnny would have three times the number of apples that Tommy Thomas has. Just how many apples are each of them holding? Right, so if Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. So Johnny has one more apple than Thomas. No, he has two more apples than Thomas. Two more apples than Thomas. So try to think of this logically, but it is numbers, so I'm probably not going to get it. But I'm going to try and think of it logically. So right, let's start with the lowest numbers. If he's got to have two more than, let's say this is here, this is uh, Johnny, and this is Thomas. So Johnny has two more than Thomas. To start with the lowest numbers, two, but that would mean he has zero. Give him three, and then he would and him one. If he gave one to him, they would then have two each. But if you think of it as in three and one, if he gave his one... Uh, no, wait, how much does he have? Thomas has to give two, so obviously that can't work because he only has one. Okay, let's go up some more. Four and two. If he gave him one, then yes, three and thing. But if he gave two, then he would have zero and he would then have six. I think I'm getting that right. Four, two, yeah. Okay, so let's do one more. Five and three. So, obviously, that'll be... um. Uh, four each, but then he would have five, and he would have three. Take two from him, so obviously then he'd only have one, and he would have seven, right? So I think by that point we should stop going up in numbers for Johnny. With five and three, wait, no, we should keep going up, I think. Yeah, keep going up. Obviously, yeah, keep going up. I'm dumb. I'm think. I'm trying. I'm, my, I'm losing my mind here. Five and three. Okay, six and four. So that works. But take two from him, which and give it to him, and that'd be two, four, six, eight. That's four times. But it's supposed to be three times more. So that won't work. So then we go uh, seven and five. So take one from him, they both have six each. Take two from him, he would have nine, and he would have three. 
three, six, nine. Seven and five. That's the answer. Because take one from him, they both have six. Take two from him to give to him, they will, it would be three times. He would have three and he would have nine. I think I've done it. Let's just let's read the hints. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. A little critical thinking applied to the above statement tells you that Johnny must have two more apples than Thomas. Figure that out straight away. Hint number two. If Thomas gave Johnny two apples, Johnny would have three times the number of apples that Thomas would have. Remember, this is Johnny, this is Thomas. Thomas gives Johnny two apples. You know from hint one that the original difference in apples between Johnny and Thomas is two. In the above scenario, the gap increases by four to six. We now know that when Thomas loses two apples, Johnny has six more than him, which is also three times more. Then hit number three. Can you think of a number where the result is the same if you add it uh, to six or multiply it by three? That number is how many apples Thomas is, uh, has after giving two away. So if you add those two back, Thomas has. And how does inputting the answer work here? Okay, so Johnny. I was right. Yeah, that's Johnny and that's Thomas. So Johnny is seven and then try and draw a five with my mouse. That should be it. Because then they would have six each. There we go, did it. Yep. Give me them pick our ass. Johnny has seven apples and Thomas has five. As you can tell, if Johnny gave Thomas one apple, both men would have six apples, like I said. And then additionally, if Thomas decided to give Johnny two of his apples, Johnny would have nine apples and, in the total, three apples as many as Thomas. I got it right. It's just start with the very lowest numbers that you can possibly have between the two of them and just keep going up by one. And eventually, you just get there. So there we go. That's the answer, right? So where will you be heading next, Professor Layton? Once our train is in working order, we'll be moving on to the next town. Oh, then I expect you'll run into the young mistress. She's leaving on the Molentary Express today. Should you bump into her, do say hello. Oh, remember, please keep Miss Katia's trip a secret from the master. Puzzle 31, past the apples, is now in the puzzle index. And there we go. Yet another puzzle from Professor Nam Pandora's box, one which I figured out all on my own like a big boy. And it, yeah, that was actually a pretty simple one. It wasn't that difficult. Just had to think about it logically and go up. And look at that face right there. That's the face that you see when you die. Look at that face. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time from Professor Layton and Pandora's box. And um, we'll just carry on the next puzzle and see where we go. And eventually we're probably going to be getting back on that train and heading out from Drop Zone. So we'll see how many puzzles we have to do before then. So thank you for watching. I shall see you all next time. Good. Bye.